celebration is in uh, in line because I think I didn't make any mistakes on the votes in this week. <laughs> I think all the numbers are right. At least Mel didn't tell me they were. It's right side up and uh, everything. Uh, but I do want to say to Jerome, I know we don't know that last hymn. You're going to mention it to me, but we're going to learn a new hymn anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to play it. <laughs> I'm about to play it. He's been practicing. Well, we've come here to worship God. Let's invite you to stand for the call of worship. God is near to the broken heart and it saves the crushed in spirit. God hears us when we call and delivers us from our troubles. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivers them from their pain. God redeems our lives and gives them for us. God is with us in this place and time. Let us join together in our prayer. Feed us, yes, O God. In this time we spend together with bread that is eternal. Unite us in a faithful response to your saving activity through Jesus Christ. Open us now to hear and experience the communion of the word we intend for each of us. Amen. Our first uh, hymn is Holy, 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 number 64.
out of time of uh, prayer, we want to lift up our, uh, our congregation, our friends and neighbors, and uh, also to share our joys this week. Uh, do we have anything we want to share this morning? You have worked on this week, and you did sound announcements, but Facebook you will be to us. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. <laughs> Annabelle and Hope pretty much they yeah. run the show and Paul and Sharon have to follow directions. <laughs> and my sister Jean, she's not from Friendswood. I'm from Midland, she's from Friendswood. And she really follows their directions. <laughs> and all grandparents. <laughs> Amen. Well we are we are gathering people from afar. <laughs> yes. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah, our prayers. In a uh, celebration, uh, I talked to my sister this week in San Antonio, and I didn't realize that they didn't tell a lot of people that uh, they both uh, had COVID uh, this, this in July, uh, and they, they both had their shots, and they just they said it felt like a mild cold. I'm celebrating that they did uh, uh, they did well and uh, did not have a lot of problems. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. 
along the old road, our camp over at the very end is going to the point we need to have the Dickerson because she went down to visit her grandkids and her son had COVID, so Jerry Ann's quarantined and she didn't come home. Jerry Ann is a quarantine just in case. More difficult. You were born in your mercy. Yeah. Yeah. So go ahead and do all the work. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a moment and put ourselves in the presence of God. Dear Lord, we can't begin to count the blessings you have given us. What we do is forget to count. It's so easy to forget what you've done to get us to this point, this point. Let this hour be a time of remembering. Remembering who we are and where we came from. Let us respond with a life of thanksgiving. And let us share those blessings with others. We share not only our material blessings, but the blessings of love and forgiveness. Feed us this morning. Give us the bread of life to satisfy our deepest hunger, a hunger that we may not even know that we have. We pray this in the name of the one who fed 5,000 and feeds us, and we use his words when we, when we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now we're going to look in and see how the uh, folks in the... Uh, <coughs> Our scripture reading today is Exodus chapter 16, verses 2 through 4 and 9 through 15. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread, for you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill the whole assembly of the people. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them whether they will follow my instructions or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked towards the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites, say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread, and you shall know that I am the Lord your God. And the evening quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And our song is Psalm 78 on page 799. We use a different response and it goes like this. We are children of God. 
person Cherokee. <laughs> Please be seated. Let's continue our response to God and God's love with our tithes and offerings. We have some volunteers over there that would like to help the offering. Father, we thank you for all the blessings you've given to us. We thank you for uh, all that uh, we have received that has sustained us physically and spiritually. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Next day, the crowd that had stayed on the other side of the sea saw that there had been only one boat there. They saw, also saw that Jesus had not got into that boat with the disciples, but with his, his disciples had gone on, on way alone. <clears throat> then some of these boats from Tiberias came near the place where they had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. So the crowd, so when the crowd saw that neither Jesus or the disciples were there, they themselves got into the boat and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did we come, when did you come here? Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for food that perishes, for food that in endures, but for food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then he said to him, What shall we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom you ha he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us so that we might see it, see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna of the wilderness as it was written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, it is not Moses who gave them the bread but heaven, from heaven, but it was my Father who gave them the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. And they said to him, Lord, sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. 
whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Is this microphone working? I want to make sure it didn't sound like it's very loud. I'll hear it fine. You hear it fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a booster right I'm glad everybody doesn't have these. I think I'd be weighing down. <laughs> Let's start with the Exodus passage. There are a lot of passive parts of the Exodus story that make great theater. We've seen it in the movies. We've seen it uh, uh, in other places. Uh, heard the story. Uh, you know, the... Uh, uh, the plagues in Moses brought down upon Egypt uh, makes great theater. Uh, the crossing of the Red Sea makes great theater. Uh, it's very dramatic when Moses goes up to Mount Sinai and gets the Ten Commandments and comes down and discovers they're worshiping the golden calf. Uh, all the things of a good movie. This passage we read this morning, not so much. This is one that you don't see emphasized a whole lot. Uh, this is uh, about the feeding of the manna in the wilderness. Now let's set the scenery. We have to remember that they went into slavery. The uh, Hebrews went into slavery, one family, and they came out thousands of people. And they had prayed to God to get them out of Egypt and Moses had come down to do that. And now they're into the wilderness. Uh, they don't know Moses very well. They don't know God very well. They knew that they were Jewish, but they probably hadn't had a chance to practice their, their uh, traditions. They hadn't had a chance to see, feel like community. Uh, so that's what God is doing in the wilderness. Well, they've left the uh, oasis of Elam and they come across a problem. There's nothing to eat. Now, when you have thousands of people walking across the desert, uh, that can be a problem. And so they come to Moses and said, there's nothing to eat. And then the, the go back to Egypt committee shows up. <laughs> They said, you know, you remember Egypt <coughs> when we had all we wanted to eat? That were the good old days. Problem is, they didn't remember the good old days the way the really the good old days were. I want to say that those other things are dramatic, uh, and, and uh, the other parts of the story are dramatic, but this part of the story is lived out in most churches in America. In fact, I would bet somebody somewhere right this minute is saying, I remember the good old days. Oh, if we went back to the time when the pews were full. Oh, if we went back to the time when we had lots of children and when we didn't have a budget problem. And remember that great pastor, St. Peter? In those days, we really had a church. A church consultant one time said in a meeting that the church would be okay if we could wake up tomorrow and it was 1954. I grew up in the 50s. I remember the days when the balcony was full and we had lots of children in vacation Bible school. I also remember that blacks and Hispanics were not welcome in that church. I also remember that children were abused and spouses were abused, but we didn't talk about that. I remember that people came because they were respectable and because there were peer pressure to go to church not because they wanted to hear about Jesus, not because they wanted to follow Christ. They weren't sure why they were there. 
anymore. Egypt was not always that great. So their memory is a little faulty. They, they forgot about the time that they were whipped and beaten and sometimes killed for the sake of the work that they were to do. Forgot about that part. Oh, if we only had the food we used to eat in Egypt. And so Moses goes to God and says, it was your idea to bring these people out. I was perfectly happy as a shepherd. Well, the Bible doesn't say that. And, and frankly, I know that he didn't say that because he didn't speak English. <laughs> but something along those lines. And God says, okay, I will take care of them. I will give them something to eat. Each day, bread will come down from heaven and will cover the ground and they can pick up one day's worth of food and it'll be a test. Now, I don't remember about it, I don't know about you, but I didn't look forward to tests in school. <laughs> now as an adult, I look back and I see what teachers are doing there just to see where we are and where we needed to go. It was a good idea. But at the time, I was not too happy with it. But this is a test. It tests their, their trust in God because they can only pick up one day. That, that after one day, that, that manna went bad, except on the day before the Sabbath. They can pick up two days worth. Now, remember, they haven't gotten to the Ten Commandments yet. They haven't heard about the Sabbath. But also remember that they are writing this story centuries later looking back they know what's coming and so they're observing the sabbath before they get the rule about the sabbath but they're to pick up the food just enough they're not supposed to grab more than they need so the question is do you trust god or do you grab all you can get do you obey god or do you say i think you have a better idea that was the test. And so the, the manna comes and they, they uh, take it, they pick up the manna and I imagine, uh, I imagine it's little flakes and they had to put it together into a loaf and then bake it so that they could eat it. Uh, it's amazing to me how many of God's blessings require some human co uh, cooperation, some human efforts, some co-creation. God just doesn't say, here it is. Now I do something with it, what he said. And then they eat the bread man and they're staying alive, they're staying, their bellies full. But you know, they come back to Moses and said, we're not happy about the menu. We're eating this man. And by the way, that's where they got the word, Hebrew word, the Hebrew phrase is, what is this stuff? And when you say it in Hebrew, it's, Manna. So every time the kids look at something and say, what is this stuff? They're going, manna. <laughs> and Moses goes back to God and God says, well, okay, we'll put a little meat on the table. And quail came into the camp of the Hebrew. It strikes me that this was not only a test of the Hebrews, this was a test for God. Will God be patient and loving and caring? Will God be faithful? Will God stick with the people and say, oh, I've just had enough. I think I can start over and do better. But God remains faithful. God's abundance takes care of the people in their greatest need. And God is persistent and faithful. And he doesn't give up. Now, we, uh, we've been reading about the, the feeding of the 5,000 and John, I think we read it last week, but the, uh, the idea of John has the, the feeding of the wilderness in the back of his mind when he writes the feeding of the 5,000. And now that Jesus and the disciples have moved on, but the people keep following them because they can't figure Jesus out. 
who is this guy that can feed 5,000 people with five loaves and two fish? Where did he come from? That's an important theme in John. Who is this guy? And where did he come from? They keep wanting to say, what part of the country is he from? And what John wants to know is that he's from God. And so they show up and Jesus says, well, what you want is more bread. What you want is to fill your belly. Isn't that how we operate most of the time? We want our immediate needs taken care of. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. I am that which feeds your deepest hunger, not just your physical hunger, but your deepest hunger. Moses gave them food from God that satisfied one day's yearning. I will give you that which satisfies for eternity. And then they ask a strange question. I never paid too much attention to it. It says, what must we do to do the works of God? In other words, I think they're saying, how can we do a miracle? We've been getting a miracle from you. We want to do a miracle. It reminds me of the magician that followed around, Peter, followed Peter around and said, you do great miracles, I'll, I'll buy it from you. If I can control it, if I can do great things, then I will benefit. The people are saying, you know, we don't need you to make bread uh, if we can do it. We want to be in charge. We want to be in control. We want to be our own God. And he says the work of God, the miracle, is to believe. If you want to do a miracle, believe in God. Believe in me. That is the real miracle. And then he said, then they asked him for one more miracle. And he said, you don't need one more miracle. You've got enough. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door. I am the way, the truth, and the life. You've got enough information. What you need to see is with new eyes. few moments we're going to give you bread not a lot just a little it's not going to quench your hunger it's not going to replace lunch but it's more than bread it's the bread of life that Jesus offers us to fill our deepest hunger. Now, when we go away from here, we'll have other hunger. We'll get hungry enough for lunch. We'll have a hunger to, for security, for love, for acceptance. We'll have a, a, a desire for health. We'll have other hungers, but our deepest hunger <coughs> can be met. If we ask for eyes to see what the bread of life really is and to receive it into ourselves. It will swell up to fill us up and to take us into eternity. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, We respond to God's uh, presence with us, with our His Word, with our affirmation of faith, number 881, in the back of the hymnal. Uh, let us stand so we show the world what we stand for. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord who was conceived 
by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered in the Pontius Pilate, but was crucified and dead and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sat at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Join me. Merciful, Merciful God, God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be in the Eden church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, individual petitions. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Join in the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks to Christ. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, 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 God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of the suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you and broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take heed, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, gave it to the disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for me for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. 
as we proclaim the mystery of heaven. Christ is dying, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us who gather here on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast in his heavenly banquet. Through to your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. So we take the bread, just like Jesus did, just like Moses had to gather the bread in the wilderness. So we remember the manna, and we remember the feeding of 5,000, as well as the last supper that Jesus had with his disciples. And we take the bread as well and break the bread, so that we can remember his brokenness for our sake. And we can eat to our fill, to fill us up with the bread that is the bread of life. We lift up the cup and ask God's blessing upon it, that it becomes for us a source of healing and wholeness, a source of forgiveness, the cup of life. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, People were hungry in the wilderness and you fed them. People were hungry who were listening to Jesus both in spirit and body and you fed them. Feed us so we might be filled up. Not just with material nutrition, but with spiritual food. In Christ's name we pray. For those assisting, please come and sit. Come. You've been invited with 5,000 of your closest friends. Please come.
Closing him this morning is number 614. So the bed which you have closed. What stands with him? Would you like to have Bell play it through one time? Yes. Let me play yes. the whole thing through. It's a simple song, but it's different. Patience and trust and enjoy together the goodness of life. God provides all that we need for life. We shall feast on the manna from heaven. 
Let's join together in our singing of the blessing. Thank you.